So again, welcome to our virtual technology week. Uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, session five uh, within our uh, uh, presentations for the week. Um, this session is the live demonstration of uh, compliant UVA LED lamps. Um, it is going to be presented by James Dowd. Uh, James is a member of the REL Incorporated Executive Team and is involved with the company strategy and the strategic marketing of sales of REL equipment and solutions. James is proactive within the NDT community and participates on a local, national and international level, attending trade shows and conferences throughout North America, as well as speaking at a number of local sections over the last few years. James currently serves as a secretary of the Minnesota section of the ASNT and sits on the ASTM E07.03 subcommittee and is actively leading a task group within the subcommittee. Um, the, the way we're going to run the uh, webinar is uh, we'll, we'll kick it off with uh, James starting his uh, presentation. Um, we won't go longer than five minutes to the hour. Uh, that's when we'll cut the, uh, the session short. Um, but please, while you uh, are seeing the presentation, feel free to use the Q&A section to ask questions. Uh, we'll do our best to answer them uh, in real time or at the end of the presentation. Uh, there's also a poll section that we will be launching uh, almost at the end of the uh, presentation, uh, just to get some feedback on your thoughts with regards to um, uh, the UVA LED lamp and the product itself. Uh, so uh, without further ado, James, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Uh, if you could take over and uh, begin your presentation, please. All right, well, thank you very much. All right, so as, uh, as I was introduced, I'm James Dowd with REL Incorporated. Um, we're a small company located up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And we'll just kind of step right into it because we kind of explain a little bit about who we are and where we come from. So this presentation is on compliant uh, LED UVA lamps for non-destructive testing. Uh, Intech NDE is a valued distributor and partner, channel partner of, of REL and an authorized uh, you know, distributor of REL's OEM products. So we like to give a little background on, on who REL is and, and kind of what we do. Um, to sum it up in as simple as we can, we're a, we're a world-class manufacturer uh, of OEM products. Uh, we make everything from chemical processing lines to fully autonomous FPI lines to uh, automated process equipment that runs in in the building materials industries, predominantly uh, ceiling tiles and drywall industries. Some of our customers down low there. Uh, where we're located, uh, we get confused, or I guess we get we get uh, we get mistook for for being north of uh, north of the border uh, because we use a lot of A's and a lot of O's. Um, we're about 40 miles south of uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario, in the middle of Lake Superior on the beautiful Keweenaw Peninsula. Uh, when we say we're from Michigan, everyone always says, oh, I've been to Detroit. Well, we're about 10 hours north of Detroit, so not even in the same, uh, same realm. Most people only know of the uh, lower peninsula here, whereas uh, we're smack dab way up in the middle of Lake Superior, technically on an island because there is a... Uh, a canal that runs through and cuts off the tip of this peninsula. So we're technically, we live on an island in the middle of Lake Superior. Uh, just a little background on REL as a company. Uh, once again, I think it's important to, uh, to get a little history on, on who's talking with you, uh, predominantly as the company, not just me, as Quentin gave a pretty, pretty lavish introduction. Um, I'm, just a, I'm just a guy who tries to help, uh, help steer the ship over here at REL. And uh, this, is, this is where we originated from. Basically, uh, REL started as a job shop, a uh, machine shop with a single knee mill and an engine lathe back in 1979. Um, and we pretty much operated as such until 1995. That's when our current president, uh, second generation, uh, Dr. Josh Locus, uh, partnered with his father as a, as a sophomore in college to, uh, to purchase Actually, it was the largest CNC lathe north of Milwaukee at the time. And, and he spent his summer vacations, uh, unlike a lot of other college kids, uh, he spent it driving around Wisconsin and lower Michigan, turning, uh, selling turned parts to the automotive industry. 
Well, we kind of started finding a little niche in in creating high tolerance parts for a lot of uh, a lot of motion controlled equipment, and that's kind of, that kind of led us into the expansion into the uh, automation of NDT. Uh, we were working with a with a company, uh, which was a direct supplier to Magnaflex, who who really specialized in fully autonomous uh, fluorescent penetrant inspection equipment, mostly for for turbine blades, as you can kind of see that picture there. And, and we realized we were making some of the more critical components of those systems. So we decided to kind of expand into uh, building, building the whole piece of equipment and actually bought out a gentleman by the name of John Demart. Um, he's a longtime Magnaflux employee, went off and did his own thing. His, he had some health issues and that's what led us to purchasing his company. We've kind of, then we extend, expanded into advanced materials. Um, 2006, we partnered with NASA for the return to flight program. I got into a lot of ceramic uh, MMCs, armors from, you know, uh, from titanium encapsulated ceramic ballistic tiles to um, basically lifetime warranty rotors and heavy brake drums for the for the vehicle industry. And a lot of that stuff is kind of behind us now, but we did learn a lot of stuff in our materials research that really helped us uh, develop more robust products here in the future. So. We never liked to neglect where we came from, even though that's not a part of our company today. Uh, we did learn a lot in there and we lost a lot of money too. Uh, I'd like to throw that caveat in there as well. Um, well, in 2013 and in, later into 2015, we kind of rebranded everything. Uh, our testing equipment went to Sure Test Systems, our automated FPI equipment went to uh, IFPI and our material handling equipment went to IRL. And then 2016, which is pretty much why everybody tuned into this presentation, I'm guessing, is we, we really stepped into the, into the UVA side of LED lighting for non-destructive testing. And that was uh, solely developed out of a need. We always like to show this slide. Uh, we, we basically partnered, it's basically because it was our highest profile project to date. Um, we, we allowed NASA to return to flight. Uh, they no longer fly the, the shuttle anymore, but Without our uh, refractory panels, uh, they actually were not allowed to return back to back to flight after the uh, after the Columbia disaster. We basically made a made a uh, uh, a panel that you could go out, uh, remove the ceramic uh, heat shields, um, custom cut this insulation in, and pack it into into the inner side of the of the outer skin, and then re-encapsulate it with the ceramic tiles. Basically, this had to be a non-binder insula insulative panel uh, due to the extreme heats it sees. Any sort of binder would have uh, would have uh, burnt up through gasification at those temperatures. Just so we always like to throw our NASA plug in there because we still have the banner hanging in our facility. Now we'll kind of get into the uh, into the history of Glow Blacks. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with our Glow Black product name. Uh, or our REL lights in general, but these lamps were were developed uh, out of a need specifically, uh, a need of our own. As I stated before, we manufacture fully automated FPI equipment. We've done that for a number of years, and back in uh, uh, price started back in about 2013. Uh, we had a customer. Uh, it was a DoD customer here in the United States who who kept repeatedly. Uh, damaging any any light we would send them on our automated FPI equipment. So we identified durability being being a major concern in the industry, um, as uh, along with you know safety, ergonomics, and 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 electrostatic. We use a lot of electrostatic penetrant spray in our systems. Uh, we found that some some technology out there is very uh, susceptible to electrostatic discharge. And if you're using an electrostatic penetrant application system, you get in the, in the right field of conductivity and you could actually short out your LED. So those are kind of some of, the, some of the needs that we had. So we set out to develop a product. It shows a, a brief timeline of, of our development of our product. As you can see here back in uh, the fall of 2014, we, we started with a pretty rudimentary uh, uh, apparatus there. It was a simple piece of extruded aluminum tubing with some ends and some, some LEDs and some drivers in it. 
And really, we were just trying to prove concept, test a bunch of different uh, LED platforms, uh, as in the, the emitter itself, uh, trying to hone in you know, what we'd want to take forward uh, in terms of production. Uh, the second generation is actually the generation that I wish we would have stuck with. Uh, this aluminum handle was indestructible, um, but we determined that it really wasn't a uh, really wasn't a very ergonomic uh, solution, and we had to develop into these uh, Delra handles. And then that led us into, you know, kind of everything from corded to battery powered to overhead um, to adding integral white lights. And this is where our product portfolio uh, stands today. We offer a, a suite of corded lamps or mains as the industry likes to use, uh, battery powered lamps or torches as in referred to in certain specifications. And then we have a, a couple offerings in our overhead series uh, with the standard profusion being probably our most recognizable brand. What kind of sets our, our lamps apart? Um, is is kind of our our extreme product testing. Uh, we take things to, to a different level than, than than others, mainly because we live on an island in the middle of Lake Superior. Uh, you you kind of run out of things to do when you're when you're uh, snowed in by over. Uh, we average over 230 inches of snow a year, so there's there's days where you have to hook up the dog sled and uh, and ride into work or take the uh, take the snow cat or the snowmobile. So when you got a lot of time on your hands and the sun doesn't shine for months on end, you come up with some, some innovative ways to, to test products. Um, and the extreme testing probably is never seen in real life, but we like, to, we like to think that if they can handle this type of shock and loading, you know, in, a, in an adverse extreme situation, that they're going to hold up, uh, you know, fairly well in standard use environments. Um, one thing that we've done is, is we've shot our lamps with uh, with the equivalent energy of a, of a 45 ACP. We've also shot it with a real 45 ACP, a uh, Kimber 1911 to be exact. Um, we drove over them with our 9,000 pound forklift, you know, to, to having some pretty good good results with that. So the extreme products testing really brings the really brings out the durability of of our of our product, which we think leads to uh, longevity in you know, the tougher your product is, the longer it can last in industry, the happier the customer is, hopefully. Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things with any LED technology, especially it's been so advancing so, so rapidly these past four or five years, is, uh, is, is certification. Um, probably the, the biggest certification name out there is ASTM E3022. And there's certain measurements that have to be achieved with any LED that would that would be certified to these requirements, um, and and really we we pride ourselves on our on our serialized certificate of conformance. Um, the reason we do is is our format was actually uh, developed in conjunction with Wright Patterson Air Force Base, uh, specifically a gentleman by the name of uh, of John Brouch, who was actually one of the co-authors of E3022. So. So it really, really with that kind of documentation and that kind of serialized effort, um, really gives you a good product that can that can help you pass any any sort of a NADCAP audit or prime audit or, or anything along those lines. We we document everything that any auditor would want to see, as well as as well as things that that maybe are just more important to to your to your specific uh, process specification. But kind of the rough parameters of of all of our all of our lamps, um, we we use a single LED emitter. Uh, we do that for a number of reasons. Uh, one being, it gives you the smoothest beam profile from a single point emitter versus having individual hotspots running three or four individual emitters, and it gives you a nice, nice smooth beam, smooth edge beam profile. Especially all these measurements are usually dictated by E3022 at 15 inches, as well as other aerospace specifications and industry specifications. So having that single emitter really does give a nice beam profile, which, which is really nice for inspections. It can give you a wide angle of a wide area of view, which can decrease your time on task 
you know, regardless of whether you're doing aerospace or industry, oil and gas, you know, pipeline, whatever, whatever it may be. This is about the other half of our of our cert. So all these lights are certified to 365 plus or five plus or minus five nanometers. And they all have a minimum uh, max excitation radiance of above 2000 microwatts at the point center. And every lamp is individually tested, recorded and serialized. And we actually go one step further. We actually keep on file all of our test data from every individually serialized lamp. So in the event, if a, if a customer would have lost their certificate of conformance, we actually keep the raw data uh, of what that lamp produced when it was, when it was manufactured. And uh, a lot of the specifications for E3022 uh, require information of when the lamp was produced and how it was behaving at that point. Not to say that something didn't happen to make it fall out of spec, but but we can usually uh, replace that certificate uh, with a new e-signature. It, it is dated when the lamp was manufactured and then re-signed the date we redistributed it. But also keeping all that data on hand is a, is a good way if anyone would want to get their light recertified is we can judge the empirical data from gathered from the manufacturing date to say a lamp that's been in use for two or three years. And we can actually look at that LED degradation over time and you know, gives us a pretty good idea how long these, uh, these lamps are gonna hold up. And that's obviously subject to environment. We've had pretty, pretty good luck with them so far. Um, I've personally seen some of, the, some of our first generation serial numbers that have been in use for over five years, coming up on five years now, that are still uh, used every day actually locally to me here so and if anybody has any questions I, I know Quentin's monitoring the chat feel free to uh, type them in there and he'll convey that over to me um, should be able to see that I think I'm not sure hopefully Quentin will uh, alert me to uh, to any questions as, as we're going I'll keep you going James don't worry about it okay perfect sounds good so now we're going to kind of kind of just kind of look through look through these products kind of a little bit closer kind of look at some of their uh, characteristics that are unique to each model or series and then and then I actually have some of the lights with me right here that we'll kind of put up on the screen and kind of give you a, give you a little we'll call it a, a live virtual product demo uh, I'm usually a lot better at these in person but we'll we'll give it a go so, so kind of the lamp that started it all with us uh, was, was the C4 Magnum. This is a, a standard corded main uh, LED UVA lamp uh, with a single emitter with an internal static electric discharge circuit. And it was manufactured to be IP67 rated, which, which allows this lamp to be completely submerged under a meter of water for 30 minutes. Now, most people aren't doing MPI or FPI underwater, but, but the, there's, there's never, I've never been in, a, in any sort of shop where a lamp didn't get wet while doing, say, some process verifications in a rinse booth. Or, or if you're working outside in the elements, you know, where you don't encounter a rainy day. So, so we felt like selecting the, the IP67 rated, which is 100% dust proof and waterproof up to a meter for 30 minutes, you know, was, was kind of a good step in in increasing the longevities of LED lamps. Another reason we selected that is because um, LEDs are most susceptible to heat. Um, heat can shift wavelength. Uh, wavelength can decrease or increase um, emission output, which you know, there are some specifications that limit to, uh, to a maximum of 5,000 microwatts at 15 inches. So increasing intensity isn't always good either. So, so we, selected, we selected to build our, build our lamp out of, out of solid aluminum. Uh, it's a 6,000 series aluminum, so military grade aluminum. And it's not extruded. Uh, it's actually machined because there's a... Uh, the, to keep an LED cool, you need you need positive thermal thermal conductivity 
Um, most people think of an LED and think heat going out is minimal so that it creates a little bit of heat. But an LED in itself actually generates quite a bit of heat, but it's all generated on the back side of the circuit. So, so a, a machined in thermal bridge that's one piece to the whole aluminum housing is is kind of kind of the route we took and once you build something out of solid aluminum it's very easy to put a couple of o-ring grooves in there install some viton chemical resistant o-rings and basically you have yourself an ip67 uh rated housing really really in term and and really that's only because we wanted a, a large heat sink and the materials we selected kind of allowed us to do that fairly easily. Some of the some of the exact characteristics of a, uh, of, a of a magnum series lamp is it'll produce a 10 inch diameter uh, spot at 15 inches above a thousand microwatts. Um, there is a illuminated indicator ring around the on off switch. And people ask us about this all the time. And they ask, why is the ring on when the light is off? And, and the reason being is in a darkened environment, such as an inspection booth, if your lamp is sitting on the table and you don't have a whole lot of ambient UVA or white light to navigate this booth, with this ring being on when the light is off, it's a lot easier for the operator to find that light on a, on a table or on a peg or on a stand just by that, just by that illuminator ring. And the other, the other side of it is, why does it go off when you turn on the UVA? Well, some inspection booths, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people have a lot of overhead UVA lamp for safety lighting, for safety, safety lighting, to be able to navigate through a room. Well, when that light goes off, they know their certified LED handheld light is now on. And I've actually seen it written into some aerospace manufacturers procedures that the procedure for the inspector is ensure that illumination ring is off. This ensures that the handheld inspection lamp, which is certified, is in use. So that's that's why we do light the ring when the lamp is off and turn it off when it's on. So it's a visual indicator that the inspector has a certified source in their hand and it is on. There's a, there's a few different ways you can, you can purchase these lamps. Um, you, know, you can buy them in a kit. That's basically the standard UV 2000. Comes with a power supply, safety glasses, a bolt-on power cord, and a hard Pelican case. You can buy it without the case. Um, if you're gonna take this lamp and put it on a bench, put it on a mag bench, bring it into a wash booth, you may not need the mobility of a, of a Pelican case. So that's obviously, a different different price schedule than the full on one. And they also can be uh, hooked up to a cord reel, a 30 foot cord reel that's retractable. Very nice in, a, in say a larger booth where you may have larger, larger parts available that you need to get out and kind of walk around them. The, the other lamp in the Magnum series in the handheld version, handheld mains is our, is our Magnum Go series, which I'll be demonstrating that shortly here. Um, the Magnum Go has all the exact same characteristics as the as the Magnum, uh, with the exception of it includes an integral white light, um, which can be used for indication verification, can be used for navigating, um, can be used for a number uh, a number of things. Um, seems to have a little flashlight in your hand is is usually handy no matter what you're doing. Like I said, the same emission output as our as our Magnum, the only difference is with the two lights on the front, uh, the UV is not centered. So that can be, if you already have some sort of jigging set up to measure your daily check at 15 inches, you may have to offset it just a little bit. Um, not really, I haven't found it to be an issue. It's just with the side-by-side -side light, you're obviously not in the center of the lamp anymore. So a different fixture holder may be necessary. We illuminate the switches the same way, except on the white light, the ring is always off when the light's off, but it's on when the when the white light's on. And that's the same thing as far as uh, knowing that you're in spec or not in spec, is if you ever see a blue ring 
on the back of our light and it is on, you are not inspecting with a certified source in your hand. And that's something that can be wrote right into the procedures, uh, help with training, uh, numerous other things, but it's a good visual indicator to be able to prove to an auditor or, or even just you know internal training that blue ring on, you're not inspecting with a certified source. It's just a good visual indicator where we've, we've been told it's a good visual indicator. Uh, it can be purchased the same way as the Magnum series. Case, no case, and cordial. If you notice our directions of use, um, remove from impact resistant case, drop, kick, and use. And like it, and like, as I stated before, we do we do some pretty harsh durability testing, so so our lights can take that uh, that directions for use right there. Um, also, should be noted all of our lamps carry a two-year warranty, um, which which is all all inclusive, um, you know, parts and labor, and and we really stand behind our product and as well as our distributors, you know, to work to work out any issues you may you may encounter along the way because things do happen, but it's how you react to them after they happen that, that sets we feel sets us. And and in tech apart, you know, we're we're gonna stand by you when something when something needs needs attention. We're not gonna run away from it. Just a little brief accessories page. Um, different mounting arms, uh, extra power supplies, bolt-on power cords, cord reels. They can be bolted right onto light. Something you can buy after the fact, and then um, a spray can adapter that can bolt right onto the front of either lamp, and a protective ring. Now I'm not sure how to. I don't know if my screen gets bigger. I don't know how I do that. Um, so James, if you if you stop your uh, presentation for a moment, if you want to concentrate on your okay. video that you're seeing, that'll bring your video into full screen for everybody. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so now my full screen. Yes. Okay. Sorry for the uh, novice zoom. <laughs> it's all good. So we learned a little bit about the Magnum series LED UVA lamp. Right here in my hand is a REL C4 Magnum Go LED and white light certified UVA lamp. Um, some of you may be interested with maybe, <clears throat> maybe uh, <laughs> tongue tie maybe familiar with with this product some of you may not be so i think what i'm going to do is focus on kind of the due to time focus on some of the the new features uh, that are come that come standard on this lamp this year this is new for this year and this is our bolt on power cord now some people may have recognized this as being our heavy duty option in the past it is a solid machined aluminum bracket with a heat shrink tubing and a reinforced cord on it new this year is a copper crimp ring which is for all intents and purposes a pex fitting but it really gives a good mechanical bond which distributes the load of the wire to our new aluminum bolt-on apparatus and installation is as easy as an allen wrench it is uh three sixteenths to be exact had to look at that one and it's simply removing two hex head not cap screws call them shoulder bolts I believe shoulder bolts we actually include the wrench with a bolt down power cord so you wouldn't have to go looking for it But one thing that our old power cords used to be is they used to have to thread onto this threaded barrel connector. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's a threaded barrel connector there. With our new power cord, our new bolt-on, we've eliminated that ring on the inside. And it just allows for a solid mechanical connection. Just insert and 
insert your screws. So it's a very easy installation. And if I had to pinpoint, you know, the weak link of our product in 2020, I would have said it was the cord connection. And one thing that we do as a company is we always try to look at the weakest point of a product and try to make it better. And I believe we've really hit it out of the park on this one. That is an easy installation to a very durable solution. Also included in the Pelican case are safety glasses. One thing that should be noted is there, every polycarbonate safety glass will filter 100% of UV uh, irradiation. And in most cases, most glass, I, most polycarbonate or glass Polycarbonate infused glass eyewear will filter 100% of UV radiation too. So if you wear glasses, a good thing to do is to simply check your glasses over a light meter with a UV source. And you can see if your lenses filter that out. Because safety is always paramount. Always wear safety glasses whenever using any sort of UVA, B or C lights. Power supply comes in included in the package. You connect the power supply with a simple IP, such as 68 seal, 68 rated seal, simple threaded barrel connector, insert, finger tight till tight, standard AC outlet. Simply plug it in. So won't be turning it on here today for ease. Let me clear this off. Now we will resume the presentation. I think yeah, hopefully you've got the share screen button on the bottom again. There yep, there we go. All right. Okay. So that was a brief demonstration there. Looks like we're probably getting up against the clock. We may have to speed up a bit here. Sorry about that. Uh, our next uh, uh, series we're going to look at is our Nomad series. Um, this one is, uh, is battery operated. Uh, we actually partnered with a uh, tool manufacturer in the name of Milwaukee Tools. We were actually then later approached by them, and we are an, an authorized integrator of Milwaukee technology. And, and the reason we selected the Milwaukee battery uh, was for, for, uh, for the low voltage battery protector. Milwaukee actually has uh, proprietary technology that, that, uh, that protects their batteries from draining below a certain voltage mark. I, I believe it's either 17.1 or 17.3 volts. Well, it just so happens that uh, an LED emission, emission is always uh, in direct relation with its voltage input. Well, the emitter that we selected, our single emitter, when it gets down to that lower 17 volt range, it's still operating at full capacity. Well, the Milwaukee battery will cut out before it be drops below the 17.1 volts, which then turns off our light altogether. So the Milwaukee battery helped us uh, meet the ASTM E3022 uh, specification for low voltage battery uh, disconnect. So if our light is on, it is always within spec. Uh, you will not see it diminish over time when the battery health starts to degrade and and that that can be most uh most commonly seen in i i utilize makita tools in my garage and when a drill battery gets low it'll wind down in power and kind of hmm. whereas a milwaukee will just turn off flat dead just won't turn on and that's and that's what you're seeing there is that is that low voltage battery protector at play so that helped us with the specs 
So James, just quickly, uh, we've got a couple of people yeah. asking the same question and it's a little bit like uh, how long is a piece of string, but uh, how long does yeah. the battery last? Uh, two and a half hours continuous runtime on the two amp hour battery that is supplied with our with our Nomad kits. Yeah. And we supply two batteries and a charger, which essentially gives you continuous runtime because a battery typically charges in 30 to 40 minutes from completely depleted to fully charged. And, and it also should be noted that we supply the two amp hour compact battery with our lamp. That is actually the smallest battery that Milwaukee makes at this current time. Uh, the red lithium ion battery, any of the red lithium ion batteries will click directly onto our light given the, given the integrated Milwaukee M18 <coughs> connector. So if someone needed longer runtime than the two and a half hours provided by the two amp hour, they could simply use a larger amp hour battery. And to give kind of a, a, a rough, rough idea, the, the eight amp hour battery, I believe will run for near 12 hours continuous runtime. It's a bit heavier, so there is a trade off there. Yeah, we supplied some of our uh, lights with the uh, the five amp hour battery, which is uh, more than sufficient for a for a shift. Absolutely, uh, I, I think it, that's a very good. Yep, James. One thing, sorry, I know you on the on the uh, uh, I think I thought on the Nomads, but uh, if we go back to the Magnum just quickly, uh, I had a question. Yeah, uh, yep. why is there no earth pin on the uh, on the plug connector? What was that? Oh, why the no uh, no ground? Yes. Sorry. Ground. Okay. Well, I'm from yep. the <laughs> No problem. Well, because this is this is a low voltage power supply, so so it runs low volts. I mean, it's only taking in 1.2 amps um, AC power, at and and it's it's outputting only 24 volts DC at a maximum of 2.5 amps. So this is all considered low voltage. So a ground plug is really not required in that setting. Okay. So this is just a standard Meanwell power supply. No different than, than what you'd plug into your computer uh, would be the best way to, to, to explain it. So it's just, it doesn't need that circuit protection because it's just not drawing that much power through the system. Would be the best way to explain it. Okay, so <clears throat> nomads can be bought um, two ways, either with a case with two batteries and a charger, or they can be bought as a bare tool, similar as you would buy a cord cordless tool with it just being the drill only. Gonna have to kind of speed through these a little bit. I understand. A lot of the emission output is is all the same. I kind of want to get to that demo of this lamp a bit. The Nomad Go is the same as the Nomad, just includes the white light. Can be purchased with a case, two batteries, charger, and or as a bear tool. And some of the accessories is the spray can adapter, uh, extra batteries and charger, which we always say here, um, you know, contact your local distributor for for help with any of these, or as we do say, you can go right down the road to your local Canadian tire and purchase some extra batteries and charger as well. Now we'll have to stop the presentation. This is our Nomad Go LED UVA lamp kit. Comes in a completely waterproof Pelican case. Certificate of conformance, maintained, serialized, dated behind the foam in the top of the case. Comes a one Milwaukee 18 volt red lithium ion battery charger. This lets you charge the smaller cells too. So it's a, it's a nice little addition to have in any plant or shop. Comes with two Red Lithium Compact 2.0 amp hour batteries. 
with the standard red lithium interface. Comes a one UV 3400 LED UVA lamp with integral UV and white light, two switches. This is the Milwaukee base I was talking about. Any, we, act, we actually integrate their technology into our lamp, which we had to send out our engineered drawings and actually had to send lamps to Milwaukee to be approved to do so. So we're not, uh, we're not some fly-by-night company. We're authorized by Milwaukee to utilize their technology in the fashion that we do as approved by their engineering team, which I think is larger than ours. No, I'm just kidding, it is. This is the UV lamp. Nice smooth beam profile. And the white light. Once again, smooth beam profile. You can also run the UV and white light which is uh, at times very important for say indication verification. If you've seen an indication and you wanted to bring it under a 100 foot candles visible white light, you could do that without ever losing sight of your indication when your UV is still on. One of our number one accessories for these lamps, these cordless lamps is our spray can adapter, which simply bolts on to the face of any one of our lamps, utilizing these two, I believe they're 532nd, 332nd Allen head cap screws. And you can turn your, your UV light into a spray can holder and sprayer at the same time. Okay. Let's see, battery life. Oh, now I just looked at the end. Now I just looked at the chat. Any plans to integrate Milwaukee's lithium ion cells into the into the nomads? Small cells? No, we're pretty much set on keeping with the uh, 18 volt 18 volt system. All right. It appears I've got long wind and we got about 10 slides. To try to burn through. Um, you got time, James. We got uh, uh, eleven minutes at least. So, okay. So, so in conjunction, uh, we we also have some specialty lighting. Uh, you know, used for used for different different unique applications. One of them being our, our liquid magnum series. Uh, this is a this is a LED UVA lamp with a single emitter that incorporates a two two meter light guide. It's half inch diameter and two meters in length. Uh, so you, you can, you know, kind of get inside of uh, tubes or uh, a lot of engine frames. I've seen these used in. Anywhere where you may have to get a good certified UVA source. When I say certified, meaning 365 nanometers plus or minus five into a smaller, smaller hole, you know, for a, for a, you know, wet, wet penetrant inspection, uh, fluorescent penetrant inspection. These are, James. yes. Sorry, in, in this case, um, would this be used in conjunction with a video scope? Um, because you probably don't have uh, great access in, in like an engine or something, right? Yep, yep. Uh, some people use them uh, in conjunction with a video scope. They'll actually bind the front of our light to their video scope and then kind of go in there with some mirrors and, 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 and look at things. But there's other there's other instances where they just use it on their on their own standalone, and the best way I can I can kind of illustrate that is if you had a smaller diameter hole just to shine a UV light in it to get that beam to be in that hole. Although you can physically look inside of say a two inch diameter hole and inspect the inner walls of that if it's only so deep it's hard to get the light source to look in there and get your head or your eye in a position to see in there. So they are used with video scopes, but they are also used as standalones where you just wanted, where maybe you'd use a flashlight or a torch in the past. This is just a more robust solution that's, uh, that's a little more nimble, a little more flexible to kind of get in there. Good. But that is a good, a good question. I've seen them both ways. Um, 
package, this is a standard package, not really optioned out at all. Um, there are a few options for this. Um, it can be battery powered, it can be mounted on different arms, it comes with a swivel base with a with a bolt on mount. So seen a lot of uh, a lot of these using welding areas when they're looking in little tight corners and, and grinding out things and then doing a local FPI right on it. It is a unique product for unique applications. Now, probably my favorite, um, if I had to pick a favorite, um, UVA lamp that we sell, it's, it's our overhead uh, profusion series uh, lamps. These are actually IP68 rated, so they can withstand a meter and a half of water for 30 minutes. But the, probably the, the, I don't know if you call it cool, or I call it cool, I'm gonna call it cool. The, the coolest thing about these lights are we use a single emitter as always, but we serialize each individual lamp. Now, a lot of times these lamps, because they're modular in design, are usually arrayed in multiple, multiple packs. Well, ASTM E3022 states that if a emitter fails in an LED UVA lamp, you need to take that lamp out of service uh, rectify the situation, get it recertified, and before you put it back into operation. It's right there in the specification. It's actually in 1417 and uh, 14, 1444 as well, the mag and pen specs. Well, what's nice about our lamps, because we individually serialize each lamp for compliance. If, say, you were to lose one of these seven lamps, you would simply unbolt it, remove that single lamp from operation, continue to work without having to be down at all, and whether that lamp had to be you know, sent out for repair or fixed or cleaned or what have you, your whole seven beam array, which can give you a large area, doesn't have to come out of service because one lamp fails. That is why we made them modular. That is why we serialize each individual one. And to my knowledge, we're the only manufacturer that does that. Can you please provide an example for ASTM and rinse tanks, please? Uh, this would be the example for ASTM E3022 lamps in rinse, in, in rinse tanks, uh, the Profusion series. This is just another way to array them overhead. They come with hanging hardware. They simply bolt together. It's all low voltage power. So you don't need to uh, you know, get, your, get your maintenance staff on site to come in and rewire a bunch of stuff. These plug right into a normal outlet and then you can join up to seven of them on one power supply with, our, with the large, larger power supply. Just some minor accessories. Uh, you can add a switch block, which some people say they need this, but from my experience, uh, we've sold thousands of these uh, lamps, not many switch blocks, because a lot of times in an overhead setting, uh, these will just be plugged into a switched outlet that's already existing from, say, like a fluorescent, uh, four-foot fluorescent or two-foot fluorescent tube light, and they just simply plug into that outlet and use the switch on the wall uh, mounted, so not, not necessarily uh, a necessity. So then stop share, bend out of the way, and bring up the profusion lamps. These are our overhead version. And what's very interesting about these products are the surface area on the front of this machined aluminum surface provides enough, sur enough surface area to adequately cool this entire lamp from the face. Now, one might ask, why is that important? And why did you even think to do that? Well, when this lamp is mounted vertically, it takes but a thin layer of dust on the backside of this or the top of this lamp to now eliminate all the surface cooling properties of this aluminum backed housing. Just by a small layer of dust, it is now insulated and it would adversely affect the performance of our LED emitter had we not allowed enough surface area for adequate cooling on the face of this lamp. Essentially, the face of this lamp 
has the same surface area as our handheld version. We utilize the same emitter, the same reflector, the same filtering in both of these lamps. We essentially pancake flatten this to give you this. And that utilization of similar components when we develop this, to my knowledge, this is the most cost-effective overhead LED lamp per microwatts per squared centimeters of microwatt intensity. Meaning if you were to break down the price by the area of coverage, this is the most economical option you will find of a serialized certified lamp to E3022 in Rolls-Royce 90061. Simple connector wires are threaded barrel connectors. Easily plug in and twist. You can put up to seven of these together on one power supply. Simple rubber plug to plug the last hole. Very simple, easy to use unit. Utilizes the same power supply that you would use on, on our Magnum series. And it simply plugs right into the back of the light. Very easy, no electricians needed. Plug it into existing outlets. Six foot lead coming off the power supply gives you some freedom in range of motion. While you're doing that, James, I'm just going to launch the poll. Uh, okay. So everyone can take a quick look at that. Um, uh, just uh, we're uh, curious as to you know some of the answers. I'll let this run for a few seconds. Yeah. So yeah, so we we have come to the end of, of my presentation. Timed not perfectly, but did my best. Um, Basically, the glow black lighting system was developed in the, the true engineering spirit. Simply put, it does the job it was designed to do. And as I started the presentation and talking about, you know, REL and why we developed this light, we literally developed this out of a need for ourselves. And, and the way the real story went was we sold, we gave these lights to our customer who we were warranting many other lamps with. And it was actually a marine base in Cherry Point, North Carolina down in Havelock, North Carolina. And six months after we gave them our lamps to use, they came back to us and said, we can't break these lights, either can the Marines that we have down here, you should sell these commercially. And that was back in 2016, we were told to take these lamps to market. We did that. Um, fast forward, you know, we're coming up on five years now being released. Um, these lights now uh, have grown into, you could say, a business uh, of their own. We've sold thousands of these lamps over the past five years. Uh, a lot of repeat customers, a lot of, a lot of good things learned out there in the industry. And, and, we're, and we're always trying to improve upon the product. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's a REL user today, but one thing we value is, is industry feedback. We can make a product as good as we think we can every day. But if we can't actually get real world feedback from people who are out there actually using it, uh, we don't feel we can actually make that product any better. So we do rely on our channel partners, such as Intech NDE, to gather that sort of information directly from the customers. But more importantly, we utilize that information that we do gather and integrate that into design changes. Um, that's why we have a battery powered lamp today. That's why we have an overhead lamp today. It all started with a corded main with UV only. Through customer feedback, we added a white light. We made it battery powered. We brought it overhead. Um, all of our products from our first one were all developed in conjunction with customer feedback and we're always open to it. Uh, the negative and the positive. Uh, you know, how can you make something better if you can't, can't figure out what you, uh, what you need to improve upon from industry, so. That's uh, that's the end of it for me. Um, Great, thanks everyone thank for you. tuning in.
Thank Hopefully you. I didn't waste um, anybody's time. <laughs> no, no. I think uh, you know you did a great job uh, demonstrating some of the uh, the aspects of, of the UV light. It's very difficult to do in a webinar, but uh, we really do appreciate your uh, input and your commitment to uh, supporting us. Um, just want to mention to everyone else on the line here that uh, James has got two further uh, presentations later in the week, um, so you can check those out. Also, uh, I'd, I'd like you. I'd like to encourage you to all take a look at the other sessions that we're putting on. Uh, there might be something that uh, you feel is of interest to you. You can always amend your registration uh, or, or just email uh, one of us at Intake, and we can add you to that list. But uh, yeah, thank you, James. Uh, have a great afternoon, um, and we will speak to you soon. Hopefully, we'll see some of the uh, attendees on some of the other sessions uh, later today. All right. Well, thank you very much for having me, Quentin, and thanks everyone for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.